Hello, welcome to this video where we look at a second example of Lagrange multiplier method. What's different in this example is that we are going to have three input variables. So not just X and Y, but also Z. And we'll figure out how that complicates things. All right, so the question is going to be straightforward, not as a word problem, but straightforward. Here's a function, X, Y, 2 X, uh, Z, and um, 3 Y, Z. And we want to find out how to minimize that. Now, the constraint that we have is the fact that the product of X, Y, and Z needs to be equal to 6. This is kind of a setup like a, like a volume of a rectangular prism, a box question. The volume must be 6, but the cost of the materials that make up the sides formulate, you know, this F function, minimize cost with the volume constraint. Generally, that's the word problem that would be behind the scenes. So because it's, you know, physically about some X value, Y value, and Z value, we're going to say that they must be positive. So X is greater than zero, Y is greater than zero, and Z must also be greater than zero. Not equal to because you wouldn't be able to satisfy the constraint. All right? Great. What is the function that you want to maximize? In this case, minimize. It's the, the XZ plus, sorry, XY plus 2XZ plus 3YZ. What is your constraint? Now remember, the constraint must be set equal to zero. So although it does say XYZ equals six, we need to use XYZ minus six as our function G so that we can say that the lambda partial derivative will be exactly equal to this constraint being zero. So what do we do with this little f and this little g? We go create capital F, which is a function of x and y, now z, and lambda in the following way, such that we do little f minus lambda times little g. Well, why do we do that? Because when we take these partials and set them equal to zero, that will be our set of equations that we have to solve, making sure by, by having the x partial, y partial, and z partial set equal to zero, that generates a, a maximum or a minimum for us. Um, and, and the constraint must be true at the same time. That's the lambda partial. And so we'd have everything we need. All right. What is the x partial of capital F? First term is a y. Second term is a 2z, and then the g part has a minus lambda yz. What about the y partial? First term is an x. Third term is a 3z. Constraint part minus lambda xz. What about the z partial? Second term is a 2x. Third term gives a 3y. Constraint gives minus lambda xy. And as a formality, the lambda partial is always minus g, and that guy being equal to zero means g equals zero means your constraint is true. All right, so this is different. Our first example didn't have a z in it. It causes further complication algebra-wise algebra because we'll have to uh, now have a set of equations, not just one, um, one pairing to do. We'd have to do almost two pairings. And so let's see, uh, setting the f sub x equal to zero, moving the lambda term over, setting the f y equal to zero, moving the lambda term over, setting the f z equal to zero, moving the lambda term over, setting the f lambda equal to zero, just moving the uh, x y z term over. All these have to be true. The set of equations must be true simultaneously. All right. So, what this leads to is, I don't know why they equal zeros there, it's kind of strange. It's a little phantom, let's uh, I'll maybe put f x equals zero, basically, leads to lambda being equal to y plus 2z over yz. f y equals zero leads to x plus 3y, uh, x plus 3z over xz being equal to z, uh, equal to lambda. And then uh, fz being equal to zero leads to 2x plus 3y over xy equal to lambda. 
Why do all of a sudden do we not care about the division by zero? It's because of the constraint um, and what we're dividing by. Um, if y is equal to zero, then one of those are equal to zero. Having y equal to zero is not a possibility. Having z equal to zero, x equal, none of these guys being equal to zero is a possibility with this particular constraint. There's no way you can have the product of three guys being multiplied together to give us six and have one of them be zero. So we don't have to worry about division by zero here. No, it's not going to happen. All right. So what we do last time, we, we paired up the x partial and the y partial and set those lambdas equal to each other. That's information. It won't be total information though. Now that we have a Z floating around, we have to pair up Z with one of the other partials there. Uh, what I do, what I like to do is uh, take the X and Y and then take the Y and Z. There's nothing to stop you from taking the X and Z as well. So Lambda equals A and Lambda equals B. So A equals B. And if Lambda equals C and Lambda equals B, then B equals C. Transitivity. Okay, great. So let's go to the next slide because uh, there's already too much going on on this slide. Let's take these two equations coming from pairing our partials, making sure that they're simultaneously equal. All right, what is y plus 2z over yz being equal to x plus 3z over xz mean to you? How can you solve this? What kind of algebra step would you take? Fraction equals fraction, cross multiply. So we have xz times the numerator on the left is equal to yz times the numerator on the right. Distribute. xyz plus 2xz squared. xyz plus 3yz squared. xyz is on both sides. Cancel them out. Then you're left with z squared on both sides. Cancel them out. You don't have to worry about dividing by zero. It's not a possibility. Cancel them out. What are you getting? What's your goal? Your goal is to get a relationship between your variables. In this case now, I want to have either x in terms of y or x in terms of z. Here it's going to be x in terms of y. And the next one I'll have, you know, either y in, um, y in terms of z or z in terms of y. Okay, so this gives us the fact, uh, let's go with x. x equals 3 halves y. That's what we get out of those two being equal to each other. We have the other two, the other pairing as well. Cross multiply as well. Distribute as well. Cancel as well. Divide out as well. <laughs> and you get the fact that uh, you can do it as y equals 2z. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I chose to do it as z equals half y. Why did I make that choice? Well, I already have x in terms of y. If I can get z in terms of y, then I can replace the x with the y formula, replace the z with the y formula, leave the y where it's at. My multivariable constraint, which is three variables, x, y, and z, can now turn into a single variable equation that I can solve. Let's do that on the next slide. We have uh, the function we're trying to maximize, I'm sorry, minimize our constraint and we found out that through Lagrange multiplier method x had to be 3 halves y z has to be half of y so if that's the case and the product is supposed to be 6 then 3 halves of y times a y times half a y must be equal to 6 take that into the constraint that's your that's your job and what you find out is that 3 quarters of y cubed is equal to 6 so times by 4 thirds Six times four thirds conveniently is an eight. So when you take the cube root, you get a two. And now you can figure out X and Z because they're based off of Y. Three halves of two is a three. One half of two is a one. One point came out of Lagrange, only one, which leads to one output value. If X is three and Y is two and Z is one, into your function, the product of X and Y is six. The product of x and z is 3, double that, you get another 6. The product of y and z is 2, triple that, you get another 6. And three of those guys added up give you 18. But how do we know that this is the minimum? We were told to minimize this function. Usually Lagrange will spit out two different values. And then you know, biggest is max, smallest is min. But here Lagrange is only spitting out one value. So how do you know? So here's what you do in this case, whenever this happens. Whenever Lagrange spits out one value, 
Your job then is to show why it is, you know, what you seek, the minimum. How can this be the absolute minimum value? Okay. So what we do then, because this situation happened, Lagrange only spit out one point. Then we don't know whether we have a max or a min. Here's how we're going to guarantee. Um, we, we guarantee that we have one of them. So here's how we're going to know which one we have. What we're going to do is um, go grab another point. Okay. That satisfies the constraint. So give me another combination of three numbers that multiply to give you six. Any combination that you can think of. And plug those into your function. If that z value, or I'm sorry, if that um, value that comes out for, for plugging in that x, y, and z, if that value that comes out is larger than 18, then 18 couldn't have been the max, absolute max. And if that number that comes out is smaller than 18, then 18 couldn't have been the min. We know it's either a max or a min, so this will tell us then which one we have. Uh, what I've come up with is a 611. The product of those guys happens to be 6. You plug those guys into your function, you get something more than 18. You get a 6, then you get a 12, and then you get a 3. And so you get 21. Now, this is supposed to be an extreme value. 18 is supposed to be extreme value. How can you have the constraint true and get something bigger than that? It must be that your extreme value is the absolute minimum. That's how you prove it when it only spits out one point. And that's how you handle it when you have an X, Y, and Z. Pair up the X and Y partial. My advice, pair up the Y and Z partial. Nothing to stop you from pairing up the X and Z partial. X, Z partial as well. X partial and Z partial. Woo. Okay, that's example two. In the next video, we'll move to example three. And then um, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, my name is Nakai Remmer. Thank you for watching. Once again, over two, 10 minutes. Sorry. It's hard to get these problems in under 10 minutes. Keep that in mind when you're solving this problem for an exam or a quiz. The time frame is critical. All right. Um, comment down below. Like and subscribe. Reach out to me if you need any help. Go to my website if you need extra resources. See you in the next video.